because I know how busy this time of year is. And so even if everybody who wants to cannot be on with us, I know there was many, many people who were really excited about the recording. So Karen, thank you so, so much for taking time out of your super busy schedule to be on the call with us tonight, guys. This is the team on the run call for um, December 12th. And we have an extra special to my heart guest speaker, Aaron Dodson, is with us tonight. And um, <clears throat> Aaron and I did not chat early about her intro, so I'm just going to wing it with what I with what I know. Um, Aaron is her upline coach is Amanda Dewey, so we have the same um, upline coach. We're both personally sponsored coaches of Amanda, and so that is how we know each other. But Aaron lives in New Mexico. And she is a school nurse, and she is married to her husband, Cody, yes, mm -hmm. and has five beautiful boys. Um, I don't even know. How old's your oldest? Like eight? Does that sound right? Eleven. No, eleven. ten. He turns ten. eleven in January. Okay. Um, so I was off there. Like I said, we didn't discuss That's this. Okay. But, um, so she has five boys, ten and under, which is... I mean, insanely busy. Um, this is one busy mama. And if you guys don't have the pleasure to follow her on social media, you should be because she's just, I, just, I love I love Erin in person, but I also love following her because who you see in person is who you have on social media. Like she is funny and um, real and just like very um, well-rounded. Like, you know, she's active in her church and her community but she likes like gangster rap and wine. So I just think that, and she's got a wicked sense of humor. So she and I have a lot in common and she's just near and dear to my heart. And I constantly look at her and wonder how she manages to do, I want to say do it all, but also how she manages to do anything because she's just got so much on her plate. And so I know that she works her power hours in chunks and I know her boys are super busy and she has had, she also makes her own personal health a priority. And I just love this woman, as you can tell. So I'm going to turn it over to her, let her talk to you, but she's super real and easy to um, relate to. So I know that she'll be open to answering any questions you guys have too. Okay. So, oh, she's a diamond coach. I should say that. And I don't know how long you've been coaching. Two and a half years. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And she's just, she always, just every month she blows my mind. She's just amazing. So I will mute myself and stop rambling and let you talk. So thank you so much for being on. Sure. Thank you so much for having me. I was absolutely honored and blown away um, that you had asked me to speak. So I'm so excited. Thank you guys so much for hopping on tonight. I know this time of year is nuts. So I really appreciate it. I know several of you. Um, I'm friends with several of you um, on Facebook. So I know you are super busy like myself. I see Alyssa. So I know she she feels, we joke that Alyssa is like my, my Midwest twin um, because she has five kids and her kids go to Catholic school and my kids go to Lutheran school. And so it's hilarious. I, we can't help but but laugh and joke about that. But yes, I have five boys. Um, I'm actually the nursing supervisor in our school district um, of like, I don't know, 11,000 kids roughly. So not too crazy big, but, but big enough that life gets really crazy. So I'm really happy to share um, what I have as five kind of things that I do every day to kind of keep coaching amongst the chaos that is my life. So um, we'll go ahead and get started. The first thing is, and this isn't Anything groundbreaking, but I've got to hit it again, is you guys have to plan your day, okay? Now, there's a lot of you that are like hyper planners that are like, you know, 4.30, work out, 5 o'clock, you know, send out invites, 6 o'clock, get kids up. Okay, that's not quite me. I have a bit of a routine, but I don't, I don't hyper schedule like that because when I do personally, if I'm not able to stick to it, I feel like I can't wrap my mind around the rest of the day. So I have a general understanding of the way my day is going to go. Um, the big things that are scheduled for me are number one, my workout time, because that comes first thing in the morning for me. I feel like that gives me a much better chance to start my day off right. Um, my workout time, I have a quick little power hour and then I get my kids up and my day rolls and we kind of go from there. The other thing that is planned during my day is my evening little power pockets of time after my kids go to bed because that's just about guaranteed 
no matter what goes on during the day, if I get pulled into lunch meetings or IEPs with my job, I, no matter what, I have a little bit of time at the beginning of the day and a little bit of time at the end. And in those power pockets, I have written down what I'm going to do. Okay. It doesn't have to be crazy, but these are the, if all hell breaks loose, the things that I've got to get done. Okay. We all know in this business, it's so easy to look at everybody, what everybody's doing as their team grows and freak out and be like, holy shit, I'm not doing those things. Am I supposed to be doing those things? I've only, I've only been doing this a year and so-and-so's been doing this a year and they're a two-star diamond already and, and I don't know if I'm doing the right things. Block the rest of that out and when it boils down to it at the end of the day, do your vital behaviors. The rest of the stuff is great, but at the end of the day, invite 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 recognize members of your team and your challengers do your personal development and follow up if at the end of the day that's all you can do then guess what that's really not a shabby day because what happens is is your business tends to grow it's real easy to get bogged down with all the other things of, of managing a team and keeping track of your challengers but if at the end of the day you can do those things that's really everything else is going to fall into place. You're going to hit success club. You're going to continue to build your team. If you can get that done, get a planner. I know people like Aaron Condren. Um, I don't care. Just get a cheap target planner and at least write down those things that you're going to get done during your power half hour, your power pockets of time. Okay. The next thing that I do is I just kind of segued into it is I work in power pockets. I don't typically have hours or two hours or three, you know, however much people work. I don't typically have that much time during the day blocked off. And I do, if I do, knowing myself, I get distracted really easily. Um, it's real easy to get caught in the Facebook or Instagram vortex and all of a sudden half hours gone by and you've scrolled through and you're no further along with what you're, what you were going to do that day than when you started. So I found if I just work in little chunks of time and set a timer on my phone and say for five minutes, I'm going to invite for five minutes. I'm going to shoot messages to everybody who liked my fitness post from the day before and ask them how they are doing. I'd be interested in what they're, what's going on in their lives and what's happening with them. If you can do that in little chunks of time, set a timer. And if at the end, the timer goes off, move on to the next task. If you can circle around, that's great. But at least, you know, in the time you had, you were able to move your business forward. Okay. Um, something else that has been super instrumental to me, and it's actually been just more recently. And Jess Kennedy doesn't even know that. Um, I don't even think she realized how big a hand she had in this was she um, hooked me up with my current success partner. And having a good success partner is absolutely so key. And I can tell you guys for like a year and a half, two years, I've been doing this two and a half years. And for two years, I kind of just, I didn't put a whole lot of value in having an accountability partner. I knew it was important for my challenge groups. I knew that I was holding them accountable and they were holding me accountable to my fitness, but I really didn't put a whole lot of stock into having a success partner. Um, but I knew something was missing. And so I had reached out actually, um, to Amanda, to my coach. And I said, you know, I think I'm ready. I need somebody to work with who understands what it's like, because while being a stay at home mom, I think is an entirely different struggle. And one that I don't understand. I really, I wish I did. I want to understand that struggle one day. Um, I think when you hook up with somebody who's kind of on the same wavelength as you and maybe in the same situation as you, someone who understands what you're going through, both the struggles and the successes, it makes it a little bit easier to open up and really share with them what's going on in your life, what's going on in your head. Because we all have those like thoughts that we don't want to admit, that we don't want to say out loud, right? And as honest as we are on social media, we sure as hell don't share everything that's going on. We don't share those days where we want to quit. And I'm talking about quit coaching. We don't share those days where we just want to put everything aside and just say, fuck it. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to just go sit and enjoy hot chocolate with my kids or those days where you want to cry because you don't know how, and you realize you forgot to follow up with three people or those days where you had the biggest check ever. And you want to share it with somebody who knows exactly what it took to get you that paycheck and get you that success. So, um, Amanda messaged me a few days later and said, Hey, Jess Kennedy has, I think 
the perfect success club partner for you. And she hooked me up with Sarah Klepp and Sarah and I have been um, communicating ever since. And it's been wonderful for me because it's someone that I can say, hold me to this or someone I know that can either smack me on the ass and say, get moving or someone who can give me a virtual hug and say, it's okay. There's tomorrow. Don't, don't beat yourself up. It's okay. So I absolutely cannot stress enough that if you guys do not have a success partner, you need to let your upline know. And if, if your upline for some reason is not active, I know, I know Jess has a couple people in there, um, that their uplines may have quit. So she may be it now hook up with her and let her know she's an amazing support and tell her I'm ready. This is what I'm looking for. This is what's going on in my life right now. I need some help. Do you have somebody that can hold me accountable? Because even outside of her organization, there's a whole big other family of coaches that are ready and waiting. And it may not necessarily be in team on the run. It may be outside of that. And you know what? That's absolutely okay. Sometimes it's good to have somebody completely on the periphery from where you are who can look at things in a different way because you may not even realize um, that that they have a new take on things because you're all on the same team. And that's really, really common. Um, something else I want you guys to keep in mind, and I'm sorry, I tend to talk really fast. It's just the story of my life. Um, is it, it's okay to forgive yourself for not getting done everything that you wanted to get done that day. And I think we're really hard on ourselves as coaches. I think we really, um, aren't as kind to ourselves sometimes as we ought to be. We get really wrapped up in, uh, I got to hit success club. I got to hit success club and I've got to add this many coaches and I've got to build my team. And Oh my gosh, I'm so close to diamond. I just need somebody to hit emerald or I'm so close to one star and you push, 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 push. And you're really hard on yourself. You can be really hard on even those around you that are wanting to support you or your coaches that you're trying to encourage. You can come off harsh and I know the intent is there that you're trying to encourage and support them but it can actually come off really harsh because we're making that about us right when we when we have a tendency to push because we're so close to hitting our goals we've really got to take into account who it is that we're pushing and what their goals are because in the end it's our job to help them meet their goals not necessarily push so them so that they'll meet mine right? So it's okay to forgive yourself. If those days, there are days where you just need to go to bed. There's those days where you just need to have a beer or a glass of wine and watch an episode of Gilmore Girls or Breaking Bad or The Crown. I'm into The Crown right now. The Crown on Netflix, like whatever it is, it's okay to have those days every now and then. And it's okay. That's one more benefit of having a success partner to have someone to vent to and say, Today was awful and rough, and I'm so upset with myself. It's wonderful to have that person there to say, you know what? It's okay. You're still amazing. In the end, I think we're all doing the absolute best we can. So you need to forgive yourself and not dwell on those things that don't come so easily sometimes. It just doesn't happen. There are some days, there are some weeks where all hell breaks loose and I'm not able to work my business the way I want to. But if I dwell on that for the week and the weeks after, my business isn't going to go anywhere because I'm still stuck on what happened. I can't just forgive myself and move on. And that's really what you have to do. And you have to understand that even those that you're coaching, those in your challenge groups, those on your team need to know that as well. Need to know that they can, they can come to you and say they've had a rough day. They can come to you and know that, Yes, you can give them the tough love and remind them of their goals when they need it, but that you're also willing to give them a hug and tell them it's okay. We're all in this together. We're all a wonderful group of strong, kick-ass women, but being women every now and then, right, we just sometimes need a hug. We need someone to say, it's all right. It's okay. Not the end of the world. We're going to pick right back up and continue on tomorrow. So really, really don't let yourself, forgive yourself. For those times when things don't go right, because I guarantee you they don't always do. And just when you think you have it down, that's when everything kind of tends to get crazy in my world. Anyway, it seems like that's when everybody gets strep throat and a sprained ankle and stitches and your husband gets sick, which means the world stops, right? If your husband gets sick, then everything, everything stops. So, 
Um, the next thing that I want to say is that it's really important, especially when you have a really busy life, when you have kids, I don't care if you're a stay-at-home mom, I don't care if you're a work outside the home parent, I don't care if you don't have any kids and you're just really busy. It is absolutely important that you take a step back and remember why it was that you started this business. Because sometimes we just push and push and push and push and forget where it is we were going. And we forget to even readjust our goals because our goals change, right? I was just reading um, the Creativity Inc. Super, super long, but it's really good um, by the gentleman who is the CEO and founder of Pixar. And he was talking about goals and how whenever you get so gung-ho on a goal sometimes, but you're not willing to adjust in between, you could end up somewhere completely. You sacrifice everything for the goal when that over time, that goal may have needed to change. Does that make sense at all? I hope I'm, I don't know if I completely screwed that up or not, but if you have a goal, say you have a goal, um, to make a thousand dollars a week as a beach body coach, say that's your goal and you're pushing, pushing, pushing your head is down and you are working, 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 but you're doing it at the expense of reading with your child every night. You're doing it at the expense of spending quality time with your spouse. You're doing it at the expense um, of your sanity, of your sleep, of your self-care. Is that really what the goal ought to be? Or do you maybe need to step back and readjust and then move forward from there? It's not that those like crazy, scary goals aren't useful and wonderful, but sometimes when we put our head down and we don't look up at where we're going before we get there, we're going to end up someplace we really, really don't want to be. So it's really important as you set those goals and as you work towards them that you look up every now and then and see if it's where you still need to be. Because I really think I'm really a firm believer. Um, I know I was when I first started. It was work, work, work. I got to hit my goal. I got to hit my volume. I got to do this. Um, and finally, one day, my husband said, can we talk about something other than Beachbody? Uh, I love you, and I, and I love that you're really pushing, but – could we maybe talk about something else? Because that's all you've talked about for the last like three months. And I went, oh, how are you? <laughs> how are things? How's your job? I forgot. And those people, success is nothing if you're not surrounded by the people you love and they're not with you, right? It's no point to earn more income for your family if your family doesn't want to be around you at the end of it because you've completely alienated and isolated them. And the same with your friends. It's You can't enjoy and share those wonderful moments with them if they don't really even want to be around you or you've completely lost connection with what's going on in the lives of those around you. So that's just something that I feel like is super, super important. Um, the last thing that I want to say, um, and this is just kind of my, my last little tip that I had written down. And like I said, I tend to talk really fast. So if I blow through them, I apologize. And you guys can back me up and, and ask questions is, um, that you really need, don't be so ashamed to share the good with the bad, right? I think um, us as moms, it's really tempting. And even when we all become friends with us coaches on social media, we get to see all the wonderfulness happening around us, right? It's, it's like um, the highlight reel of a football game all of the time, right? In a really good way. I don't mean that badly. I mean that in a really amazing way. But with that, we start comparing our highlights to everyone else's because we know Facebook is the highlight reel. As, as much as we try to share the good, the bad, the ugly, the funny, we're seeing little snippets of what goes on in everybody's life. Um, we're not necessarily seeing the before and we're not seeing what happened after those pictures and those videos. You know, we see the snapshots of, of us with our kids out at, you know, the Christmas railways and the hot chocolate and, oh, this is so perfect. But you don't see two seconds later, three of the kids drop their hot chocolate and are crying and throwing a fit and everybody's frozen and it's cold and you're fucking miserable wondering why the heck you even decided to take your kids out there because it's awful and you all go home early. You didn't see that, right? You didn't see that it took an hour to get everybody ready and you were screaming with your spouse the whole time because he was supposed to be helping get shoes on the baby and he was checking his fantasy football and you realize when you get there, the baby still has no shoes. 
you don't see that. You see the little like wonderful family photo with the hot cocoa. And that's awesome because frankly, everybody loves seeing it. But it's also okay to show the days when you are a freaking mess and you didn't get your workout in. You spilled your dinner all over the floor. You ate a popcorn tin in one setting and half a bottle of red wine. It's okay to share those things. And frankly, those are the things that make you more relatable. What worries the heck out of me is that, and I, and I don't say this to make it sound like I have it together, but what worries me is when people say, I don't know how you have it together. I don't. And it, and it really, it kind of bothers me that people think I do because realistically, all I'm trying to do is make it through my day the best I can. And there are some days I want to curl up in the fetal position and just cry and wonder how I'm going to do it. There are days I pick my kids up from school and I think about everything that has to get done from 3.15 when I get them till before they go to bed. And then my power half hour, my power pocket still has to happen after that. And it's everything I can do to not have a panic attack in my car because I want to do right by my kids and give them the attention and I have to cook dinner. And my son Owen was recently diagnosed um, with a learning disability. So I'm trying to make sense of that. And, but I can't like, as a parent, I don't know that I can share that because that's his journey, not mine. You know what I mean? Like there's so much that goes on. Am I screwing my kids up? Am I, am I screwing up my relationship with my spouse? Am I showing him enough affection? There are all these things going on in my life that people don't see. And what I really am striving to do is show the imperfections more show the crap that goes on because to me I my favorite comments are when someone messages me and says oh thank God I'm not the only one thank God I am not the only one that gets up super early and works out and works my ass off and by the end of the day I've had three glasses of wine and opened up a box of little Debbie's and Oreos and just killed it like or those days where I don't want to talk to my husband because I'm so frustrated or irritated when I go to bed. Or the days where I screamed at my kids from the time they got home from school until they went to bed. And I want to put my head in my hands and say, what am I doing? That is my life. It, there's the wonderful snapshots in there too. But it's not easy. And I sure as hell never want to glamorize that. Because I feel like as moms, we wear that as a badge of honor. Like, look at how busy I am today. I, you know, did 15 loads of laundry and folded them and put it away and polished the baseboards and made this like wonderful organic meal for my family and packed individual lunches for everybody and made meatballs and, and sewed a dress for my daughter and painted my house. And I'm still smiling at the end of the day and put out at the end of it. Well, after that, and the kids were to bed, I still put out for my husband. Yay me! Like, that is not how my life works. That is not how my life works. And I really wish it were appropriate to tell my, I want to make a sign for my husband that says it's not Friday night. You know, like, it's, it's not a badge of honor to prove how busy you are or that you're doing everything perfectly because we're not. And I think as coaches, it's so easy to look at, um, look at some of these fabulous people and be like, what the hell, you know, but we're seeing a snapshot of their life too. It's easy for me to look at a picture of Mindy Winder's beautiful family and be like, God damn, that bitch has everything. That woman is dealing with an autistic daughter all day. Like, I can't look at that gorgeous picture of them that I saw at Disneyland and compare what I'm dealing with to her because she's taking care of an autistic child. You know, it's okay to show people, peel back the curtain a little bit. It's like Wizard of Oz, like peel back the man behind the curtain a little bit and share to people, let them know the struggles. You don't have to be pity party. Woe is me. Like, Oh, poor me. Oh my gosh. That scared me. I saw somebody in the background and it looked like a ghost. Sorry. Um, you don't need to be like, woe is me. That's not it. You're just simply sharing the fact that you are human. You're doing the best you can. And those days that suck, but you know what? I'm here for you too. Just like I have this wonderful support group of women behind me, supporting me and encouraging me. I'm willing to offer that to you too. And you know what? There's days where we're going to be hot messes together and that's okay. 
at the end of it, we're going to have a glass of wine and take a deep breath and know that tomorrow is a brand new day. So that's probably my big, my big spiel for tonight, but please, please, please don't be afraid to show, to show those imperfections, to show the days, you know, I want to do a happy dance when I'm like two minutes early to work. Most days I'm 10 minutes late. I just thank God my boss is usually 10 minutes late too. So she never says anything to me. It's really, it's fantastic, but that that's okay. That's my life. And it is okay to show those pieces of the puzzle that don't look as pretty as someone else's that, that don't look um, as amazing as you want them to be because that that's the picture. The picture isn't the little snippets. The picture's really those nasty pieces that come in there that, that don't look so good either. And it's okay to share that because if nobody else loves it and likes the post and loves the post, all of them like the post and be like, show you a picture of what's going on behind the scenes at my place too. And it's okay. We'll support each other in the whole journey. Okay. That's, that's my spiel. Sorry. If, again, if I talk really fast, but um, I'm absolutely happy to answer questions and um, talk with you guys about how, how we make sort of make things work. Tread water. <laughs> in my house. Is there a chat box? Sorry, am I supposed to be paying attention? I don't think there's anything going on in the chat box. Okay, good. People have just been mesmerized by this. And you made me cry, but in a good way, because <laughs> I've just been feeling super, super overwhelmed lately. So, and super, like, I'm putting all this pressure on myself to be, like, to do it all, you know? Mm-hmm. Ah, so, thank you. For being real, I want to know when you get the extra things done outside of the power pockets. I don't know if anybody else in here is wondering that, but lately I have been, I mean, sorry, gosh, I know you guys are all like, I had a really great month in November and everyone's like, I can't believe Jess, like you were amazing. You have a newborn. And it was really, really amazing. I, I did, but I think some of that was just lucky and, and because I had just like, like a lot of, I built a lot of momentum going up to having the baby because I knew I was going to have the baby, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, and I was doing a lot of those power pockets for my phone, like I'm breastfeeding. And so I'm just following up. I'm doing the things you said, you know, um, mm -hmm. except for PD I've been really bad with, but I want to know, like, when are you finding time to do things outside of the four vitals? Like when are you finding time to plug into an extra training or this zoom call or is anybody else struggling with that stuff or is it just me? Okay, so um, something I actually had talked to Amanda about, we did a KPI two or three weeks ago, and um, because I was in like a billion trainings, and nothing was getting done, and I was overwhelmed, and so I told Amanda, I said, I need you to not put me in anything else, and, and I said, I'm saying this with love, because I truly appreciate any training that anyone does that they offer me to help develop me as a coach. But I said, the bottom line is I know what to do. I don't want to, I don't want to say waste because it's not waste, but if I already know what needs to get done, I don't want to spend my time going reinforcing that when I already know it's there, when I could spend the time implementing it. Does that make sense? And it's not that I don't find it valuable. Like I think what, just was it like the laws of leadership? Were you in that one? Like, I, I just yes, I like, uh, I'm out. Like, I, I do awful. not have the time yeah. to make all these things work. My personal development happens in the car when I'm driving, you know, kids here and there or when I'm getting ready in the morning. And even that is in like 10 minute little spurts. Um, and it just accumulates. But right now, um, I, I've just said I can't do it because I know what needs to be done. I, in, in the end, trainings are wonderful, and I mean this for, for anyone. And, and if you're a new coach, I'm a huge fan of trainings just because it helps get your mind wrapped around everything. But in the end, it always goes back to those vital behaviors. Any training you're going to hear, anything somebody's going to tell you, any, you know, emerald push to diamond course you're going to see, it goes back to inviting and following up and messaging people to ask them about their life and their goals. 
that's it. You can tie it, always tie it back to those things. And if you're a new coach, I and I've told this to my own, spend 45 minutes in the back office one day playing around. You're going to learn more playing around in the back office, figuring out what's going on back there than if you did a training and I walked you through it step by step. Because if I walk you through it step by step, you're going to see me. And I'd rather you just learn and play and do. Um, but if you were going to do a training, like if you were going to host one, Jess, um, what I've been doing lately is Sundays haven't been a traditional power hour. Sundays have been like power prep. And actually next Sunday in the team spirit, I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be doing a power hour like Sunday edition, which is simply prep for the week. Meaning I'm going to just write out on a paper what, what my posts for my team, what I want them to be that week. I'm going to come up with some posts for my like page and try to get those scheduled out. Nothing crazy fancy, but even just one a day. Like even if it's a recipe from Team Beachbody, just something basic to keep it rolling. I'm going to write down what I want to accomplish from my own posts on my personal page, including like um, invites to a challenge group and my team page. I'm going to write down those people that I really want to invite that week. I'm going to get that stuff done on Sunday so that when I go through my week, I'm not, I don't know about anybody else, but I feel like I waste time trying to find people to invite. Does anybody else do that? Like you're scrolling through Facebook or you're looking at your likes and being like, okay, who liked the post that I haven't talked to in a while? Like, so if you can do that on a Sunday and take 30 minutes to do that on Sunday to write down 25 names that you're going to invite for the week, then you have people. And then come Monday in a power pocket, if you want to, because again, it's your time, do whatever the hell you want with it. Like if you want to shoot out 25 invites on Monday, and say Monday's invite day, the rest of the week is the time to follow up with all those people, then do it. That's okay. That's okay. I know um, Alicia and Tony and I have talked about that before. She's like, yeah, usually I just invite like one or two days a week. Those are my heavy invite days. And then the rest of the week I'm following up and keeping the conversation going with those people. Um, but that's, that's what I've been doing. And it's been really helpful because then I don't feel like I'm scrambling during the week when I do have those pockets of time. Um, and I have to tell you, Jess, I have a theory. The month you deliver after or right after you deliver a baby, like anybody will do whatever you want them to do. I've decided because the month Archer was born, it was the same way. He was born December 3rd and I hit success club like two days after he was born. And I don't even know how the heck that happened. I was like, well, score. So I, I don't know if people just like it when women have babies or what, but you're amazing. I'm not discounting the fact that you're freaking awesome. And, um, but I, I think there's some sort of phenomenon to that. I really do. Are there any other questions? I see Alyssa. I like that. Uh, Megan does power prep. Yeah. I, I've just kind of become a big fan of it. Sunday nights. Um, is a prep day because it makes your week kind of you know like food prep if you prep on sunday it makes the week go easier very similar thing um post i plan out my challenge group posts if i haven't done that already um all that is done on monday so that during the week i can just focus on following up on my challengers if y'all don't use the app oh i'm sorry that's probably why i love the app so much because i can schedule everything out and i can totally even copy and paste from old challenge groups into new ones <laughs> Which, have you guys seen that feature? Have you guys not seen that? There's a feature on there when you go to schedule your posts that you can, um, and I forget what the terminology is, but you can go back. It'll, any old challenge groups that you've ran in the challenge apper, challenge apper, challenge group app, you can go back to those posts and copy and paste them into the new schedule. So like I had a challenge group that I ran in June. And I have different people in my one now. So I was able to take all those posts that I did in June and copy and paste them like quick, like five minutes and I was done for the week. It's really easy. I know we love Facebook, but yes, the post, Noel, the post library is amazing. And this, I forget what it's called, but it's kind of over to the right. If you just look, um, it's with the post scheduler and I forget what it's called but it has like a little bell on it and you can basically just go back to your old posts 
and change the date and time. Boom, 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 and schedule them out. So, it's so we know the post library. Is it the is post it library? The, it's the what? Post library. And yeah. it shows you, like, yeah, all your different groups. You can tell it what group you want it to look at. And it's yep. like, isn't that amazing? Like, I. Yeah. I think I texted Amanda and I was really cross and said I wanted to hump Carl Deichler when I saw that because I was like, so for anybody short on time, it was amazing because you can literally just copy whatever you want in there and keep going. Cause I mean, prep week looks, my prep weeks don't always look the same, but I mean, really there's only so many times you can make prep week look interesting. So if you have three or four ways you do it, you just cycle them through. So Yes, I'm with you. I, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. It makes me happy. Do you run groups only on the app? You know, Bethany, lately I have been just because um, the scheduling. Like, I know Hootsuite's there, and I've never done post-cron, but Hootsuite's pictures always look funky to me, and it's a pain in the butt. And unless you pay for Hootsuite, you can only like schedule out to one thing at a time. So then I've got to figure out and remember, cause I don't use it enough, how to delete everything and then add the new groups in. It's a pain. I don't like it. So for the most part, I've been running them in the app. Um, you can even, uh, you know, if you want to get really creative, you could do coach trainings in the app. Realistically, if you wanted to and schedule it out um, and run it like your own little, you know, coach basics challenge group. I've seen people do that too, but yeah, I've been, I've been a big fan of the app lately just because I can schedule it out and you can schedule multiple things. Like I'm doing the 21 days of, of fitness right now. So in the evening I have a post that pops up with what the workout is for the next day. And in the morning I have a post pop up with a holiday Shakeology recipe and fitness quote. So it makes it a lot easier. So I'm not having to keep track of so much and then it doesn't get lost in the newsfeed. I was having a lot get lost in the newsfeed with my challenge groups um, and not seeing and missing things and people don't pay attention to it enough and with the app I feel like they do. The only thing I wish they did in the app was live stream or video. I wish like you can upload a YouTube link but you cannot upload a video from your phone. Like if you just recorded it, you can't do that and I wish you could. I hope if Carl Deichler were listening to this, I wish he would put that in because I like doing that for my groups. Like, especially at the beginning is shooting them a video saying, this is what you can expect. I feel like it holds a little more weight, but I miss, I don't know. I just figure they're coming. I figure it's coming. I don't know if it is or not. I don't quote me on that. I just assume it will at some point. How many times do you follow up with the same person? You know, it depends. Like if it's within the one month, especially if they're like, yeah, I'm on board. I'm going to purchase. You know, those people that like you're in my heart, you're like, they may be the one person that actually orders when they say they're going to order. Right. Um, typically I'll follow up with them. And then as it gets closer to the challenge group date, probably three times in a month. And then as we get close, I'll put a cut like, Hey, I know you're super busy. I'm so sorry to bother you but we're about to start. I've got a spot held for you. If now's not the right time, that's fine. Let me know and I'll follow back up with you next month. And then in a month, I follow up with them again. I just shoot them a quick. And when I follow up with them, it's really just a quick, hey girl, how are you? I hope you're doing okay. Just wanted to see how your house goals were going. Is there anything I can help you with? And, and go from there. It's not, you know, you ready to buy a challenge pack? Every month, we just, I just kind of follow up and keep the conversation going. I know some people love Teamsy. Um, I liked Teamsy, but I I don't think it's worth thirty dollars a month. I don't know. I don't know. I I'm not near as creative. I'm sure Alyssa probably has like more creative than me. But to me, that Facebook thing that you upload to Teamsy, where you upload a Facebook the zip um, the zip drive from Facebook, you can upload the same thing to a Google document and just put the last date of contact and then sort by date. Like as long as you have a last date of contact, you could sort all those people by date and then you realize, oh, look, I haven't talked to so-and-so in six months or 
you know, I, I don't record that I've ever talked to this person, so maybe I should shoot them a message and see how they're doing. So that's really what, what I like to do. At one point, I was using a binder system, and it got a little bit complicated, and I stopped. But typically, I just like to use a Google document and just name, last date of contact, and anything real pertinent that I need to know, like gluten-free or, um, you know, knee injury, so can't do insanity or whatever, anything that I really need to know. But the, I tried Teamsy and I thought it was really cool because it let you set a financial goal and told you what you needed to do to hit it. But it, I felt like I took a lot of time navigating the site when I wanted to actually log the contact. So, and I didn't feel like $30 a month was worth it. I felt like that was kind of pricey. That's just me. But if you're loving it and it's working for somebody, then by God, use it. I mean, hey, whatever works. Any other questions? All righty. Well, that's a glimpse into my craziness, my chaos. Any other questions, guys? All right. Oh. Well, I won't keep you guys because I know your time is precious, but Erin, seriously, I cannot even tell you how much I needed this call. So thank you. Oh, thank you for having me. You guys are amazing. Just so you guys know, like I absolutely look to this team as something I aspire to be as a coach. I look at Jess Kennedy and I'm like, oh, she's who I want to be when I grow up. So. Oh, well, likewise. I, so thank you. I, I absolutely love, and I know I met um, some of you guys this summer at Summit. So I just, I absolutely love you guys. And. And I'm so thankful for you all and for your coach because I love, I love her very much. Well, I love you back and we, I just admire you so much and we are so grateful that you were on the call with us and it was literally, you were like speaking to my soul. So thank you. Yay. Thanks for having me. It. And have a good night, ladies. Thanks. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you, Erin. Thanks guys. Bye. All right. Bye.